bulimia is not something that a lot of guys either own up to or has even talked a lot about. We hear a lot of you know females doing it, particularly in the entertainment industry and and so forth, and and even young females, young girls, teenagers go through a lot of that type of stuff. But to hear a guy talk about bulimia is something that, I mean, still it's out there, but it's not as prevalent. Like, talk us through that. Like, how did that show up or did you recognize that showing up? Or was that something that you didn't really tune into later down the track when maybe you got help or, or someone pointed it out to you? Oh, look, I knew it was an issue. And I knew I had a really unhealthy relationship with how I looked at food. But because my challenges with depression and anxiety and having some really bad injuries at, at Melbourne and having time away from football made me realize how precious football was. And I didn't want it to be taken away so I was just desperate to just do anything that I could to remain in AFL football because without it I felt really worthless you know I had a lot mm. of self-worth issues so I knew that I um, I had an issue with with what I was doing you know with the food but because I was such a proud person I didn't want to admit to anyone that, that what I was going through it was just it was hidden for so long and I just continued to, to suffer through it and then you know the Probably the worst thing that could have happened to me in 2012, I, I got back into the team and I started playing like really well. Like I recaptured my form. You know, I think I missed half the season in 2012 and I finished fourth in the best and fairest. And any elite athlete will tell you that I reckon in excess of 90% of them are extremely superstitious, right? So whatever's working from a performance mm. perspective, you just continue to do it. So you know, I just continued to do that over and over and over again because I was like, you know what, I'm struggling mentally, but I don't care. You know, that's not important to me because I'm back playing footy and I'm playing really well and that's all I want to do, you know, with my life. So that became really problematic in itself where the best thing for me from a mental health perspective would have been if I was playing like really ordinary, it would have probably forced me to say, you know what, it's not actually doing you any good, mate. Maybe it's time mm. to, to rethink and readjust, but you know, that wasn't my mindset because everything everything as a footballer revolves around your performance. Was there any health and well-being or mental health support in the footy clubs in those days or is it something that was very hush-hush? The awareness was starting to become a bit more prevalent. You'd probably hear a few more, more so past players, talk about their mental health experiences. And the doctor at Carlton at the time, he pretty much knew that there was something going on with me and he offered me the opportunity to talk about anything on a number of occasions but just being that proud stubborn typical young male no i'm fine mate i'm fine you know mm. i just like a drink to unwind and and relax and so he knew that i mean i'm sure there were resources there like i don't specifically remember at the time but i'm, I'm sure they would have been there if i was willing to go and seek them out and, you know, and this is something that it's constantly debated within footy circles. Are players given enough support? But it doesn't matter how much support or how many resources are actually there. If you're not willing to actually mm. source it yourself and access those resources, then it's all for nothing. You know, the time that I did finally reach out to the AFLPA and say, you know what, I'm really struggling. I need to start speaking to someone professionally. Nothing short of amazing for me. Paid for all my psychologist appointments, paid for all my psychiatrist appointments, Paid for both of my stints in the Melbourne clinic, a private psychiatric clinic, which I reckon would have been somewhere in the vicinity of 70 or 80 grand, you know, mm. and without that, I, I wouldn't have been able to, to spend time in there. So I'm extremely grateful. I think they've copped a lot of flack in the press probably the last year or two, and that might be true of some people's experiences. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's not, but in terms of my experience and how they were with me, I cannot say enough good things about them. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Like when we think about footy injuries, for example, and, and the media gets onto it and say someone's done their knee and for every day after that until they come back, they're reporting on the knee injury and so mm -hmm. forth. But over the last few years, and I remember Buddy Franklin had some time out of the game for mental health and we're starting to see a little bit more of, a, oh, they're taking time away from the game for their mental health or they don't even mention the words mental health. They're just saying they're taking time away from the club. I'd love to see my personal view is that the media reports on, oh, you know, he's having a mental health break or she's having a mental health break with the AFLW. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as someone who's played in the system and, and experienced mental health challenges. Do you think that's a positive thing to normalise mental health or do you think there's a better way to do it? Oh, look, I, I, I think it's, you know, fantastic. I think the more we normalise it, the more it just it becomes 
normal and it's not something out of whack and people just say, oh, you know, that's just like taking time off for being physically mm. sick, you know, right? Mm. It's just, we go to a cardiologist when our heart's bad, we go to an optometrist when we've got bad eyesight, we go to a urologist when something's wrong with our, when we're urinating. So it's got to be the same for when we've got mental health issues. It's it's, it's no different, but because of that stigma that's been attached mm. to, to mental health for so long, there's still this apprehension to want to talk about it, particularly with males, right? You look at the statistics, I think it's nine people are taking their own lives every day and seven of those are, are males. So we're heavily overrepresented in the numbers. We're heavily underrepresented in the eating disorder numbers because mm. we're not willing to admit that. Um, but yeah, the, the more we the more we normalise it, and the, you know, the more it just becomes, you know, part of the, the everyday conversation and people just don't say, he's just taking some time off to, to have a refresh and, and to get himself right. And, you know, I think the more players... But do that, and I take my absolute hat off to every single modern day player that has that has done that. You know, Alex Solo, Buddy Franklin, Tom Boyd ended up retiring. You know, those guys are setting a tremendous example and really leading the way in terms of normalising. You know, what mental health is for athletes because there still is a, a still is a massive common misconception out there that successful people in life, whether that's in business or in the arts industry or in the athletics industry don't suffer from these issues and it couldn't be further from the case, you know? And I think mm. there's almost been brainwashed into us that, that money, fame, fortune, success makes us all happy on a permanent basis. And all those things, don't, they don't do anything for our happiness. They might provide brief hits of pleasure for a certain period of time. But, you know, if you're in a position where you're severely depressed and you win the lotto one day, you might get a bit of pleasure and a bit of a bump in your, you know, your pleasure for the next couple of weeks, but you're going to return to baseline at some point, right? It couldn't be further from the case. Everyone, you know, no matter what your, your success, your job title, what industry you're in, there are always going to be people within those industries that are going to be affected by mental health. And it doesn't discriminate. Mm -hmm. And we need to promote that message more and more.